Good morning. One of the most wonderful sounds is of our church family with fellowship out in the lobby. And it's the laughter and the love that we feel in this place. And it is so amazing. So as we stand this morning, and people are going to come in and join us, but let's go ahead and stand, and we're going to join our voices. And Lord, we know that you go before us, and we know that you pave the way for us. And every battle is yours, Lord. And as we sing this song, let's not let this message pass us by. Every imposter, every contender will fail to compare with you. There is no kingdom, authority, power like yours. No one more royal, no one more loyal than one God, one truth. No other kingdom, no other freedom like yours. You are high, high and lifted up, strong and mighty enough. You are. Then when you came through with strong love, strong love, all my accusers silenced and scattered by you. Your people are rising, we realize it is finished, it's finished. Stand in the promise, it is accomplished in you. You are high, high and lifted up, strong and mighty enough, you are King. Oh, I high, covered by your wings, it's there you fight for me. And powers will have my worship no threat of darkness no fear of failing will steal my purpose you're my surrender protector defender and every battle every so true no matter what it is you're facing you got to let God go before you because he is there he's there to fight your battles for you and with you we are wish safe travels for our bass players and our drummers we are down to three but I will say this as we sing these next worship songs this morning throughout the morning 
We are so blessed for Mike and Tracy and what they bring to this worship team. And sometimes God knows exactly, not sometimes, always God knows exactly what we need. So I really encourage you to really listen to the music and the melodies this morning and the harmonies and let, let just the music wash over you. If you don't feel like singing, then listen. Maybe speak the words along in your mind. But if you feel like singing, then join in the joyful noise this morning. God, we love you so much. And we are sorry for all that we make it that is not of you. And as we sing this next song, I want us to quiet our minds and open our hearts. Music fades and all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the thing I've made it and it's all about you it's all about you Jesus King of endless worth no one could express how much you deserve Though I'm weak and poor All I have is yours Every single breath I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i've made it when it's all about you it's all about you, Jesus. You may be seated. Good morning. Welcome to Imagine Church. To our guests, we, are, we welcome you, and we want you to know that wherever you are on your faith journey, there's a place for you here, and we do welcome you here. Imagine Church is delighted to have all of you present on a day that promises to be filled with great and wondrous happenings, for it is the Lord's day, and he is able to do wondrous things. This morning, we are concluding our series entitled Follow, and our scripture reading sums up what it truly means to be a follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. The reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 24 through 26. Hear the word of the Lord. Then he, Jesus, said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it.
but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? As we consider Jesus' teaching this morning, may God bless the reading and hearing and the understanding of his word. Let us pray. Father, we enter into this sacred space, into your presence with joy and thanksgiving. Joy for the hope of our salvation and thanksgiving for your marvelous grace. Bless our lives and our homes, Father, as we gather. Impart your wisdom into our lives as we hear your word, as we sing songs of praise, and as we join as a community of faith to follow and to serve you. We thank you that you welcome us in our present circumstances with all our imperfections and flaws, made whole only by your mercy and grace, made new through the resurrection of your Son and perfected by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. Be with Bruce as he gives the message this morning. Let his words be pleasing to you as they speak your truth into our hearts, minds, and lives. We ask these things by the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. full house this morning, but, but we're so glad that you're here. Thanks for taking time out of a busy fall schedule to attend to the things of God and to be here with us at Imagine Church for this time of worship this morning. I'm excited about what lies ahead. This is Mission Sunday. We're going to say more about that in just a few moments, but we are delighted to have each of you here. We have some special guests with us this morning, and many of you may know um, J.P. Russell's daughter and, and uh, granddaughter, Rachel. Rachel was married here in this chapel to Gavin a couple of years ago, and she's with us. Rhiannon's here and her friend Joe, and we're glad you all are here with us for worship this morning. Pam is a professor here at Gordon-Conwell Theological Seminary and a good friend of Jess Erickson's and Heidi's um, and Mike Winson's and Chrissy Winson's, but uh, she didn't hold that against us, and she's here today to worship with us this morning. We're glad that she's here. Uh, my good friend Sandy Wilkerson is here worshiping with us this morning. And my dear friend Dick Lewis is here. We're delighted to have them with us as well. Dick, you just had a birthday not long ago. What, 107, 108? What, I can't remember which it is. 109. 
They look good for 109. The other thing that's impressive about Dick, if you've seen Lake Wiley Today magazine, we just got our copy yesterday, there is a wonderful feature article in it about uh, Dick and his home and his um, daughter and son-in-law. They live together two generations share one really neat house that was designed for two families. And he hadn't even seen this yet. Jennifer, take this and give this to Dick, if you will, so he can take a look at that. Gives him something to do during the sermon this morning. <laughs> Talking about Dick's age reminds me of the story about the 92-year-old man who wasn't feeling well one day, so he decided to go to the doctor for a checkup. And a few days later, the doctor saw him walking down the street with a beautiful young lady by his side. He seemed to be just as happy as he could be. The doctor was surprised. He looked at him and said, wow, you seem to be doing a lot better. And the man said, yes, doctor, I just took your orders. You said, get a hot mama and stay cheerful. And the doctor said, I didn't say that. I said, you got a heart murmur and be careful. <laughs> I mentioned a few moments ago, uh, today is Mission Sunday. And this is something that we do each fall. And I'm so proud of our Imagination youth and our Imagine kids because they are the ones that really spearheaded this under uh, Lydia's leadership, our children's minister, and the leadership of Tim Gunn, our minister of youth, but also Kerry DiDonato, who is our missions coordinator on the leadership team. And what we've been doing, as you know, back in August, we began collecting school supplies that will go to the boys and girls in Bacani in the Philippines, a church that we support and a ministry that we maintain there under the name of Philippine Hope. I want you to take a look at what they saw, what they received two years ago when we did this. This is um, the day that they uncrated all the school supplies that we sent over there two years ago in 2017. And they do this, they make it a really special day. They begin with a meal, and for many of these boys and girls, that probably was the one main meal that they had that day. But they have a chance to, first of all, share a meal together, and then they have a time of worship together, because this is a big deal for them when they receive a shipment of supplies from the United States. And everything you're going to see here came from you, from Imagine Church. Then they begin to uncrate the boxes. You see all the boxes there. Now, it's frightfully expensive to send shipments like this by air freight, so we send it by freighter. And we have a, a company out of Clover that will send this to us on a ship uh, from the Philippines. The reason we're sending it this week is so they'll get it in time for Christmas. And you remember the flip-flops that we sent? It's one of the gifts that we sent them a couple of years ago. And then these are the boys and girls that will be touched and blessed by the receipt, the receiving of the school supplies that we are going to commission today and have a time of blessing, and then Carrie will be responsible for getting these shipped to them this week. But those are the boys and girls, those are the faces that will be blessed by what we are doing today and what you have assembled over these last couple of weeks. And just look at the faces, and you realize this makes a difference in their lives. And everything that we send, they will use. When we were over there one time, Tyra and I, with the group that we were a part of on a mission team, brought some school supplies up to a, a school in uh, Parasipus, a vill an outpost village, and the teachers literally wept when we gave them the supplies because they just didn't have any. That's the kind of difference that you're making in schools for teachers and for boys and girls. And to lead us in this time of blessing today, I want to invite Carrie DiDonato. She is our missions coordinator. She's been the one in charge of all this. Carrie, would you come up and Lead us now and, and instruct our boys and girls and our imagination youth. And would you join me in expressing thanks to Carrie for what she's done? Thank you so much. Um, we are just so grateful for all the hands and the hearts that went into fulfilling this mission initiative. Um, from those of you who made financial contributions, from those of you who brought supplies or purchased supplies or sheets, um, and certainly to all of those, the youth and the children and the adults that helped through the packing process to assemble these kits. There were just so many hands that touched this whole initiative and that's just so very special. We're thankful for all of your help. And I'm not done asking for help. Um, in order to make today's uh, dedication successful, I need to ask for help from any and all children and youth who would like to help. If you would like to help with today's commissioning, please stand up and go to the back of the room. We need your help bringing the completed kits up to the front of the, of the church. So I have some helpers back there. If you would like to help, you can go to the back. You can wear a backpack. You can carry a backpack. You can wear and carry a backpack. And then come back up here to the front of the, serv of the church, please.
A couple of years ago when we did this, we had plastic boxes, plastic bins. This year we have cinch sacks that all of our boys and girls have, um, have compiled and put the, uh, the supplies in over the last couple of Sundays. Wonderful. Thank you so much. We have over 60 completed kits to send, and we have extra supplies uh, that didn't make a complete kit, but we're still going to send them overseas. So we probably have at least two or three boxes, those boxes that you saw on the slides, um, full of supplies to send over this year. So thank you all so much. We're going to share now in a time of commissioning. I'm going to ask Carrie if she'll lead us in this. All who take upon themselves the name of Christ are called into ministries of love and service by the example of Christ. As we of Imagine Church serve the people of the Philippines, we pray the blessings of God upon our endeavors. We are honored to serve as ambassadors of Christ in mission to the people of the Philippines and dedicate these supplies in the name of Christ. May God accept the labor of our hands and hearts. Let us affirm our belief in the responsibilities of Christian mission. We believe in God, creator of the world, and in Jesus Christ, the redeemer of creation. We believe in the Holy Spirit, through whom we acknowledge God's gifts. We commit ourselves to the value and worth of all persons and to the improvement of the quality of life. We dedicate ourselves to peace throughout the world and to the blessing of children among all the nations. We believe in the present and final triumph of God's love and grace in human history and gladly accept our commission to manifest the life of the gospel in the world. Carrie, let me have a time of prayer for these uh, supplies and for our boys and girls and young people who put these together for us. Let's pray. Loving and holy God, we thank you for the work of the hands of our children and youth here at Imagine Church that have made the blessing and the giving of these school supplies possible. We know, O oh God, that each one of these cinch sacks will go to uh, the hands and hearts of boys and girls in the Philippines that will make a difference in their lives. These are items that they will gladly and gratefully and joyfully receive and that they will use in their daily work at school and in their homes. We thank you, O oh God, for this partnership we have with people who live literally the other side of the world. And for things that they would have not have otherwise, we can make possible because you've given us so much. So we thank you, God, for the gift and the work and the, the um, enterprise of these boys and girls and young people here at Imagine Church that have made this possible as we share in your mission in the world. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the way that you guide the life and work of this church family, and we give you thanks and praise for all of this as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to take just a moment in worship now to dismiss our boys and girls, our Imagine Kids, after they drop the cinch sacks off. Don't take them with you. That'll just kind of gum up the works. But if you'll put them back in the container back there at the back, then you can make your way out to the rotunda to go to this morning's session, and Imagination Youth will invite you to meet your leaders there as well. And thank you, each one. There is an epidemic sweeping across our nation's churches. That is the shrinking population of their volunteers. Alarming, to say the least. To investigate the impact, we set up our cameras, removed all the volunteers, and followed a man we'll call Pete. 
as he attended a local worship service without any volunteers. It started out like any other Sunday. Pete arrived five minutes late, as he always does. He assumed a greeter would open the door. <laughs> he assumed wrong. Uh, uh... Have you ever had church coffee that's been sitting around for a week? Well, Pete has. <laughs> Deciding life was about more than just coffee, Pete finally answered the call to the mission field. But there was nobody picking up on the other end. To further complicate matters, Pete had to stoop down and get his own bulletin. He even had to hold and comfort a tiny human that he didn't understand. In fact, Pete didn't understand any of it. So, how can we as a church body keep this from happening? Seems there's a very simple fix. It takes a little bit of time and a little bit of effort. So won't you do it for your church? Do it for yourself. Wait! God bless him. Volunteer for Pete's sake. Where's my car? Hold on! One of the startling things that we notice here on Sunday morning is when our Imagine Kids and Imagination Youth go out for their morning sessions, how many adult volunteers get up and go with them. And volunteerism, of course, is the lifeblood of the ministry of the church. And many of you serve in such faithful ways as host team, as AV support, as musicians, as Imagine Kids leaders, Imagination Youth leaders, there is a ministry for you. And if you do not have one, speak to me or one of the leadership team members following worship, and we can take care of that for you. But we're so proud of the volunteers that make this ministry possible. Just a few announcements I want to share with you this morning. Uh, just some upcoming events we have in the life of the church. We're going to run through these, then we're going to move into our prayer time and worship. Life groups are resuming. We have home-based life groups as well as fellowship-based life groups. We'd love to have the entire church family to be involved in a life group. And we're going to have a sign-up genius that will go out with the newsletter this week. If you're not a part of a home-based life group or a fellowship life group, we invite you to become part of one. And so if you would look for that and just uh, take just a moment, it just takes a minute to sign up on the sign-up genius, you'll have an opportunity to become part of a life group for this year. Life groups really are the way that uh, you really can grow in your faith. Worship's fine, and I hope you'll continue to, to come here on Sunday mornings. But to take your faith to the next level in terms of its depth and substance and meaning, become part of a life group. They meet every other week. We'd be happy for you to become part of that. Next Sunday, we've talked about this for a couple of weeks, it's going to be a day of gratitude, a day of celebration, and a day of looking ahead. It's going to be a day when we can remember with gratitude how God has been at work in the life of this new Christian movement that is so young uh, compared to most churches, and then God, how God has worked through the hearts of, of one couple in particular to make this ministry possible. And so we're going to share about that next week. We'll have a time to express our gratitude, a time to celebrate, and then a time to kind of pull back the curtain ahead and look ahead about what God has in store for Imagine Church in the coming months and years. It'll be an exciting day, a very memorable day, and we invite you to be with us on Sunday, September 15th. Deborah has shared about this the last couple of weeks. We have a women's life group that will have a social uh, this coming Thursday evening, meeting here at 5.30. And I think Deborah said uh, through last week we had 13 that have signed up. We have an opportunity for more. If you'll look at, for the sign-up sheet, it's on the kids' check-in table this morning. And just uh, sign your name if you want to be a part of that. You'll receive more information. But we'll meet here Thursday evening. They'll meet here Thursday evening at 5.30 to go out uh, for dinner together on this uh, women's life group social. Deborah's also beginning an evening Bible study that will begin October 3rd at 7 o'clock p.m. It will be here at Gordon-Conwell. She's mentioned she's also willing to offer this after worship on Sunday mornings for those who are interested, and it's entitled Numbers, uh, Learning Contentment in a Culture of More. Very timely study for people in America today. And so Deborah needs to know by this, the third week of September so she can order books, if you'll make note of that and let her know. Deborah, lift your hand. If people don't know you, you can see Deborah after worship. She can give you more information. The Guys and Cars Life Group is going to have an outing on Saturday, September 21st, and they'll meet at the pit stop uh, for breakfast at 8.30, then go together 
to the Clover Auto Show and Fall Festival. We did this a year ago. It's a fun event, and we invite all the guys to come. Bring your rides, clean them up, and uh, you can even enter them in the car show if you want to on the 21st of September. We're all excited about Jess Erickson. She's going to bring the message for worship on Sunday, September 29th. I'll be preaching homecoming at my home church in Salisbury at Milford Hills. I look forward to that, but I'm excited for you that Jess is going to bring the message. Holder of two degrees from this seminary, uh, I'm impressed with everything that she has shared about her own personal theology, her understanding of how God is at work in her life. We look forward to that message on the 29th. And then beginning in October, a new series called Lessons from Football. And you may have to tear yourself away from the Panthers home games to come and hear the series, but it begins on October 6th and will continue through the Sundays in October. Those are just some things coming up in the next several weeks. As we move into our prayer time this morning, I just want to share with you some prayer concerns. And we have a number of those. And just listen to these and keep these individuals on your hearts and also in your prayers in the coming days. Tracy's husband, Stu, Stu Burge, has his PET scan tomorrow and likely will begin um, his... Uh, Stem cell treatment in October, on October 6th. Our prayers are going to be with Stu and Tracy with you during the, the time he has ahead of him in the next coming weeks. Bob Wujak begins chemotherapy tomorrow morning, September 9th, if you'll pray for Bob and Linda as well. Randy and Martha Edwards left early this morning to fly to Houston. Randy is meeting with a doctor tomorrow at MD Anderson in Houston. Um, he's having, so far, uh, good results. Uh, we're we're uh, positive about what we're hearing in his improvement, if you keep him in your prayers as well. Phil Griffin is on the Walk to Emmaus this weekend. He is one of the support people providing the Walk to Emmaus for men. If you want to learn more about Emmaus, ask me. I'd love to share that with you at some point. Um, Andy Brown, we congratulate him. He is wrapping up his years of service as a Charlotte Mecklenburg police officer on the police force. He begins a new uh, career chapter in his life in the coming days, and we want to congratulate Andy. If you share that with him, Lisa, we'd be very grateful. Lori Daniels is improving at home. She's been ill for a number of days. Paula Davis is improving from her recent hip replacement surgery. Uh, Jeff and Linda Delp had to go back to Pennsylvania. This is the third uh, death of a family member that they've experienced in the last couple of months, if you'd pray for them as well. I visited with Lisa Newfer this week, and she is doing well. She had a uh, stem cell transplant at Duke Medical Center back in the summer and is improving rapidly. She is home if you'd pray for Lisa as well. Didn't mention this last week, but it's good to have DJ and Paula Price back with us in worship. DJ lost his dad just several weeks ago, and um, it, he was mighty young to have to lose his dad. And so, DJ, our prayers have been with you and Paula and with your family. And we're glad Taylor is with you now, uh, DJ's niece who's living with them now. And uh, Virginia Russell and Rachel and Rihanna uh, and others of that family, Paul, distributed J.P.'s ashes down at Gulf Breeze in Pensacola this past week. And Virginia, you've been in our prayers as well, as have you, Rachel. Um, any other prayer concerns that I didn't include? Just lots of people to pray for. And as I go through my prayer time in the morning, I realize that each family has some level of pastoral need. And so never hesitate to share that with me or with any of us on the leadership team. We want to be mindful of your prayer needs and to keep you in prayer. Let's bow our heads and return to God in prayer. May we pray together. Gracious, loving God, we know that you've called your people to be a light to the nations in every age. And we're to follow you out in the world in courage and, and to claim the ground for justice and for truth. We just pray this morning, O oh God, that you would show us the way in our Savior Jesus Christ to help us to hear all those whose voices have been silenced by disaster or by despair, by tragedy or by oppression. We know we don't have to look far to find people who need to be embraced by your hope and held fast in your love. We've been talking these weeks about the theme of follow. And we pray, O oh God, that we may follow Jesus down the mountains of life into the cities and towns and villages of our world, that hungry mouths may be fed, that homes may be rebuilt, and hope restored to hopeless people, that the salvation of God might be proclaimed. God, we pray that you'd raise up among us the prophets of today, and then open our hearts to hear them above the sounds of those who would lead us astray from your calling and on to more comfortable paths. Speak to our human frailty, we pray. And gather us again toward the wonder of your salvation in our Lord and Savior. Forgive us, O oh God, if we've met you on our way and tried to keep you to ourselves rather than taking you out into the world. 
God, come and call us anew, that we may be your people, and that others may come to know your grace and mercy and love, your provision and your sustaining power through us. May the hands of Christ and the wisdom of Almighty God be made known in our actions on behalf of a needy, hurting world. And may your Holy Spirit be both our challenge and our peace. And we pray all of this in the name of Jesus, our Savior, Lord, and friend, and for his sake, amen. In the scripture reading this morning, we were told to take up our cross. Taking up the cross is sacrificing all of who we are and have to the Lord. As Paul says in Romans 12, 1, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. As the host team comes forward, offer yourselves and your gifts to the Lord our God. Let us pray. Father, we offer to you all of who we are as an act of worship. Our gifts, our lives, the school supplies to the Philippines are offered to you as we seek to do your will, connecting and serving one another and the world. We ask that you would multiply our gifts so that our lives would be a light of hope in the world, shining forth the love of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, by the power of the Spirit who dwells within us. It is in the name of your Son we pray. Amen. Savior, I come, quiet my soul. Remember, redemption's hill where your blood was spilled for my ransom. Everything I once held dear I count it all as lost. Lead me to the cross where your love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord, I lay me down. Rid me of myself, I belong to you. Holy. Oh, to the cross You were as I tempted and tried Human The word became flesh and bore my sin in death. Now you're risen. Everything I once held dear, I count it all as loss. Lead me to the cross where your love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord, I lay me down. Rid me of myself, I belong to you. Oh, lead me, lead me to the cross. Savior, I come, quiet my soul. Remember.
It's not really unusual to hear a phone ring in church, but I do remember the church I was serving a few years ago during the offertory. A young woman's phone rang who was sitting down at the front, but she answered it. I remember she said, I'm in church, what you want? (laughs) Well, this morning we conclude the series that's called Follow, and it's been based on a very simple premise, because Jesus says to you and, and he says to me, I want you to follow me, and we've been looking at what it means to follow Jesus. And if you're just starting out, it may be nothing more than simply coming to church. And yet this is so new to you, you're like, you're asking me to give up my Sundays? Maybe that's what following Christ is to you. You're just starting down this road. For others of us, maybe you're way down the road. And following Christ means giving up a relationship or staying in a relationship. Following Christ means making my financial resources available. Following Christ means a different perspective on what my children will do with their lives, even when it doesn't line up with what I wanted them to do. And suddenly I find myself as a Christian in this awful dilemma of, okay, to follow Christ, it's almost like I have to give up part of my life. I have to give up something that is so precious and so close to me that it's like giving up a part of my life. And yet at the same time, I know, I've been around long enough to know that when I'm old and I'm hours or weeks or months away from death, that I would give up everything between now and then to be able to come back to this day and to do the right thing and to live my life in such a way that it, that it reflected the ideas and the issues of eternity. And not my selfish little mine, 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 and me and mine, and my relationship, and my money, and and my career, and my plans, and my job, and my major, and my friends, and mine, mine, mine. And Jesus quit trying to lead me away from, from what is life to me. You realize, don't you, that in the here and now, it is so difficult to live with the end in mind. And yet we're smart enough to know That in those days, last days and months, maybe last years of our life, as we look back at our teen years and our 20s and our 30s and our 40s and our 50s and our 60s, we know enough to know that we're going to look back and we're going to go, oh, if I could just do it again. Many of us would say, if I could just do it again, I would follow Jesus so much more closely. And we'll look back and we'll Think about all the things that we said no to him over. And they'll all look so trivial. They'll look so small. They'll look so silly. And most of them will be gone anyway. And we'd give up everything to be able to come back to maybe this moment. Because maybe you're in the decision-making mode right now. And you'd give anything to come back to this moment and say yes to Jesus. As Jesus neared the end of his ministry, it became very evident to the disciples that things were not going to work out quite the way that they had thought because he had started talking about his death. And he talked about his resurrection too, but they never really heard that part because they could never get past, I'm going to die. And they just couldn't understand that. And suddenly, it wasn't any fun anymore to follow Jesus. And they began to have second thoughts. And there's a scene, and we're going to read these verses again this morning. There's a scene in which Jesus comes out in front of his guys and he says, all right, here it is. Let me put your dilemma in its proper perspective. The dilemma is this. Salvation is free. It costs you nothing. Following me will cost you something. But refusing to follow me could cost you everything. Salvation is free. It didn't cost you anything. But I'm telling you guys, as you already know, following me is going to cost you something. But I'm warning you, refusing to follow me could cost you everything. He goes on to say, and these are my words, not his, everybody loses their life. But follow me and your life won't lose its meaning. Everybody loses their life. But not every life loses its meaning. 
It's as if he's saying, guys, when you're old men, when you're days or weeks or months away from leaving this life, you would be willing to come back to give everything from this point forward to be able to come back and relive your life and follow me. And the great thing is those 11 guys got it, and they followed him. And 2,000 years later, we're still talking about him. This morning, I want us to look at a passage of Scripture that as I get older and older, honestly becomes less threatening and more promising. It's a passage of Scripture that on the surface seems to take us back to a battle line where we're looking at our life and our death and our freedom. It's a passage of Scripture that I hope by the end of our time together this morning, you'll understand that it's really not threatening because it was given as an invitation. An invitation to take our otherwise pretty menial, meaningless, minutia-filled lives and to give them purpose and significance. Because again, everybody dies. Everybody's life comes to an end. But not every life is lived with purpose and meaning. And through the invitation that we're going to see this morning, the Lord Jesus Christ offers every single one of you an opportunity to live a life that's full of passion and purpose and meaning. Because following Jesus will cost you something. Refusing to follow could cost you everything. We're going to look again at the passage that Heidi read for us earlier in our worship. It's from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16. And as I said, Jesus had just informed his followers that, that he's not long for this world, that soon he'll be leaving. And of course, they're looking around wondering, well, what do we do? Do we stay? Do we remain a part of the team when we know that it's not going to be a team much longer? Do we continue following somebody who says they're not going to be around to follow? And so Jesus kind of circles the wagons and he says, let me make this very, very clear what I'm talking about. Here's what he says, Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then he said to his disciples, whoever, now that would be us, whoever wants to be my disciples must, and this really isn't very good, must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. In other words, he says, if you're going to follow me, let me give you a heads up. At some point along the way, your agenda and my agenda are not going to line up. There's going to be a butting of heads. There's going to be a clash. And in order to follow me, there will be a time in your life. There may be many times in your life when you're going to have to deny yourself. You know what deny yourself means? Deny yourself means say no to yourself. I want to go this way. God wants me to go that way. And I have to say no to Bruce and say yes to God. So there comes a time in following Jesus when I have to say no to me in order to say yes to God. I have to deny myself. And obviously, in our culture, this is not a real popular option. Because every time I turn on the television or open a magazine or look at a billboard, it says, do not deny yourself, right? Right? Have everything and have it now. I deserve it. It's what I need. I mean, there's nobody telling me to deny myself. But the interesting thing to me is, you know, all these new diets you see on television or here on the radio, isn't it interesting? They say you can eat everything you want and still lose weight. I mean, it's the ultimate. You don't even have to deny yourself in order to lose weight. It's just the culture we live in. And Jesus says, I've got to tell you, that may work in Charlotte. And that may work in Lake Wiley. And that may work in the United States of America. But I'm telling you, at some point, if you're going to follow me, you're going to have to say no to you in order to say yes to me. If you're going to come after me, you're going to have to deny yourself, take up your cross. And when he said take up your cross, to them that just said death, 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 death all over it in that culture. Because they understood a cross wasn't artwork. A cross wasn't something that hung around your neck. A cross had a smell to it. It had a feel to it. It had blood on it. Because they'd seen a cross used. And Jesus used the most graphic of all word pictures to say, to follow me means at some point you must die to yourself. You must die to your desires. You must die to all those things that, that make up life for you. In order to follow me, 
I've got to let you know on the front end, eventually there's going to be a death. And you're going to feel like you're dying. But that's what it's going to take in order to follow me. He said, you're going to have to take up your cross daily. In other words, you can't stand here and make a once and for all commitment. It's every single morning waking up saying, dear Heavenly Father, today I have chosen to follow you. And when your deal and my deal come into conflict, I'm deciding ahead of time to deny myself and to follow you. Basically, it's deciding that Bruce is no longer going to sit on the throne of Bruce's life. And that Bruce is no longer going to wear this crown that he's worn for so long. And that Bruce is going to get off the, crown, off the throne and say, Lord Jesus, I want you to sit in that throne. And I want you to wear this crown. And I want you to be the ruler and controller of my life. And when my desires conflict with your desires, your will be done. Because I'm going to say no to Bruce and say yes to my Lord Jesus Christ. And it's okay if that makes you feel kind of funny this morning. It makes me feel funny, and I'm saying it. It's just threatening. Because what are you going to ask me to do? Well, we'll just see. And we think that's not very smart to sign up to follow when you don't even really know where you're going. We teach our children never to make a decision based on that kind of reasoning. But Jesus says, I'm telling you, if you're going to follow after me, then you're going to have to deny yourself. You see, here's the reality. I've been doing this a long time, and here's what I've come to realize. It's a lot easier to be a church member than it is to be a follower of Jesus Christ. In fact, there are a lot of church members who are content with just being church members. It's one of the reasons we don't have membership here. Because you get lulled into thinking that that's what it's all about. But there are a lot of church members who are, who are very content with just being church members who have never on a consistent basis made a decision to deny themselves and to follow Jesus. And if that sounds threatening to you, you know why? It's because it is threatening. You know why it threatens and what it threatens? It threatens the very core of what we say we are and who we say we are. It's threatening because God is asking me to give up control of my own life. And that just doesn't sit well with me. And Jesus understood that it wouldn't sit well with us and it wouldn't sit well with his audience. So he goes on from this threatening statement and explains why he would make such a demand at such an ominous time in their story since he has announced that he is in fact going to leave. He's going to be killed. Look at what he says next in verse 24. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. Explain that. He says this. If there comes a time and I ask you to do something that you don't want to do, there is a sense in which you're saying, no, 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 this is my life. I want to save and preserve my life for me. So go away, God. This is my relationship. Go away, Jesus. This is my money. Go away, God. This is my college major. These are my plans. These are my friends. Go away. I want to save what is life to me. And Jesus says, I'm warning you, if you live your life saying no to me in order to save life, I'm telling you up front, you're eventually going to lose that life. You're spending a lot of time and energy trying to preserve something that you cannot preserve. It's a bad decision. But the interesting thing is, and many of you have been alive long enough now to know, the times we say, no, God, go away, you can't have this, three years later, it's gone anyway. Six months later, she's gone anyway. Two years later, he's moved out anyway. You know, five years later, I don't even work there anymore. And I have said no to God in order to preserve what means life to me. To give this up is like giving up part of my life. And in time, I've lost it anyway. Jesus is saying, I know this sounds threatening, but I'm inviting you to something. And that which you're trying to preserve, you're going to lose anyway. But, if you will choose to lose it for my sake, you will preserve it. Because you will, because if you will learn to find life in me, and if you will learn to find life in following me, 
And if you learn to find life in a relationship with me, then that will never go away. And day after day and year after year of following me, what you gain and what you can become is something no one can ever take away. And how foolish it is to say no to God over something we're going to lose anyway. And so Jesus says, I know it sounds threatening. I know it sounds harsh. I know it sounds like I'm asking you to die. But understand, to try to preserve your life is to try to preserve something that you can't control and can't keep. How much wiser is it to deny yourself and follow me? Because the life you're trying to find and preserve in this world, you will lose. He not only says deny yourself, he says this, look at verse 26. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul? In your translation, it might say lose or forfeit their life. But he's not talking about physical life. He's talking about something else. He says, what good is it for a person to gain the whole world and forfeit his or her very self? And he alludes to an illustration of a man or woman, imagine this, who through hard work gains the whole world. That is, they have everything and everybody they could possibly want. But they've gained that by saying no to God. And in saying no to God and refusing to follow Christ, they've amassed a huge fortune. Everything they could ever want and everybody they could ever want, they have everything. And in the end, they still die. And it's all gone. And not only have they lost their physical life, they have lost themselves. Because in heaven, on the other side, all that they were here, they no longer are. And what a shame to accumulate and gain the whole world, and then to lose all that, to become a nobody. Because your whole identity was wrapped up in something that you accumulated and built by saying no to God. And Jesus says, what a tragedy. Whenever I think about this, let me tell you what comes to mind. And I, I know this is kind of touchy. I know this could be un misunderstood, so just kind of bear with, with me. And if it sounds a little bit judgmental, I'm, I apologize. I'm just sharing what comes to my mind. When I think about this passage and running it through the grid of my own life, I think about Mother Teresa and Princess Diana because they died the very same week, three days apart, several years ago. Isn't that interesting? And yet Princess Diana got all the fanfare because she was such a celebrity and her death was so sudden. And while everybody was looking over here, it's like Mother Teresa just kind of slipped out over here. And the interesting thing is, do you remember when, when Princess Diana got married to the prince? It was just kind of the fairy tale marriage, wasn't it? And lots of people still have these big photo albums in their living rooms with color pictures of that wedding. Because, I mean, every little girl in the world was like, that's who I want to be, the princess who married the prince. I mean, everybody else marries the frog, but she married the prince. That was just unbelievable. Every little girl wanted to be Princess Diana at that moment. No little girl has ever grown up wanting to be Mother Teresa, Right? I mean, nobody, no little girl is flipping through Time magazine going, oh, if only I could live in Calcutta in abject poverty and look like that. I mean, that's just never happened, has it? We respected what she did, but we all wanted to be Princess Di, right? And the very same week, they both died and left this world and walked into another kingdom. And I wonder what it's like for them on the other side. Because Princess Di is no longer a princess. Mother Teresa is still Mother Teresa. Sold out in love with Christ just as she was her whole life. She never lost anything. She just became more of what she already was. Now, I don't mean to cast judgment on either life. All we know is what we know. But what I'm saying is this. As I look at these verses of Scripture, it does sound like Jesus is asking a lot. It sounds crazy to ask you to get off the throne of your own life and allow him to be the king and ruler of your life. But I'm telling you, if you don't, what a tragedy. I mean, what a tragedy to spend your whole life becoming something, to spend your whole life becoming somebody, to spend your whole life defining yourself by decisions where you said, no, God, not now, no, God, not now, 
No, God, you can't have that. I won't go there. No, 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 no. You spend your whole life defining yourself, and in a moment of time, you forfeited not just your life. The Bible says you have forfeited yourself because you are no longer what you spent your entire life trying to be and trying to become. You know what brings this into incredible focus for us? Now, you may not be a believer or a Christian or a Bible person at all. You may not have been listening so far. But, but here's the thing that I think puts us all on common ground. You know what it is? Think about this. When you attend a funeral, you attend a funeral, and this passage of Scripture becomes crystal clear. Because we don't celebrate at funerals how many buildings he built. We don't celebrate the lavish party she threw. We don't celebrate golf scores. We don't celebrate, oh, they sent their kids to private schools and all the things that just consume our time and our life. We don't celebrate any of those things. Do you know what we celebrate at funerals? We celebrate the very thing that Jesus says, follow me and I'll take you there. Character. What a good father. What a great mother. What a wonderful son. Sympathetic generous, would do anything for anybody. It's all about the things that Jesus is saying, I told you, that's where I wanted to take you. Why, to say, why say no to me when you inherently, just in your humanness, know there is something beyond this life? And there is something beyond the things that we give our lives to so often. And there is a thing, an eternal thing. There is a character that gives life meaning. And at every funeral we focus on it, don't we? Because we all know that's what we should celebrate about a life well lived. Not all the other stuff that we give our life to. We know that. So somewhere along the way in our walk with Christ, we come to the battle line. And our Savior says, you're not up for this challenge? That's fine. You can say no to me. You can go back to your home. And you can live in the safety and security of the world and the reputation that you've built. But I'm telling you, one day when you're lying in your beds, in your days, hours, weeks, months, minutes away from death, you'd be willing to trade all of that to come back to this moment and live fully surrendered to your Savior. And at that moment, all of this becomes crystal clear. It's not a warning. It's your Savior saying, I'm inviting you to the opportunity of a lifetime. A life that will be physically lost, but a life that will never lose its meaning. Will you repeat this after me? Salvation is free. It costs us nothing. Following Christ will cost me something. Refusing to follow Christ could cost me everything. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, when the sun comes up tomorrow morning, I pray that you'd find us saying, Jesus, be my king. Jesus, be my leader. Heavenly Father, I'm here to follow. And where my will and your will conflict, no longer my will, but your will be done. Father, for the man here today who struggles ethic ethically with what's going on in his business, and he knows, he knows, he knows. Father, just give him the courage to follow. For the marriage that's tough and both partners want to bail, just, just give them the courage to follow. And for the single adult here who's in a relationship they know they shouldn't be in, but it just means life to them. They just can't imagine losing that piece of their life. God, give them the courage to follow. God, for the, um, for the youth, the young people of our church with all their life ahead of them, Lord Jesus, just give them the courage to follow you. Lord, wherever they are, whatever the next step may be, Lord, for the person here who just simply needs to come back next week, just give them the courage to follow. Whatever it is, Lord, I pray that at the end of our lives that we would look back and breathe a sigh of relief. 
that no pastor would have to stand over our dead bodies at the grave and try to come up with something positive to say. But that our lives would just effuse the character of Jesus Christ who made us like himself as we follow it. Lord, do that in my life. Do that in all of our lives. And take away the fear and help us to see it as the opportunity of a lifetime as we follow you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I know this can be a difficult concept for so many of us, and we're not perfect, and we're not made to be. But what I love and what I feel so blessed and humbled to be a part of is this Imagine Church family. I have never in my life been around a group of more people who are joyful followers, and it is so exciting that our beacons of light right here are shining so bright and continue to, and, and bright candles just keep coming to us, and it's so wonderful to see new people and people that come time and time again. So let's keep inviting, and let's keep shining on this community on the world. As we stand and we join our voices, Lord, it will be our joy to say your will and your way. Sing with us. With this heart open wide from the depths, from the heights, I will bring a sacrifice. With these hands lifted high, hear my song, hear my cry, I will bring a sacrifice. I will bring a sacrifice. I lay me down, I'm not my own. I belong to you alone. Lay me down, lay me down. Oh, and all my heart, this much is true. There's no life apart from you. Lay me down, lay me down. Letting go of my pride, giving up all my rights. Take this life and let it shine. Take this life and let it shine. to you alone. Lay me down, lay me down. Oh, hand on my heart, this much is true. There's no life apart from you. Lay me down, lay me down. Oh, Your will, your way, it will be my joy to say. Your will, your way, it will be my joy to say. Your will, your way, always. No guitar, just voices. It will be my joy to say. Your will, your way. Be my joy to say your will, your way, it will be my joy to say your will, your way, always. Jennifer, that was beautiful. What a fitting song to conclude this uh, worship with. It's 1126. I've got four minutes. Would you be seated for just a moment? <laughs> Um, because this is important, and I've been looking forward to when we're going to do this. Gregory and Tamara, would you come up here and join me? Would you mind, please? I'd love for you to come up. I don't even have to say how much this church family loves this couple. You, you know how 
deep is the love and affection for this couple. Gregory was our very first ministerial intern and served here with us for two years. But he and Tamara and, and Dana and, and uh, Tamara and Gregory's uh, children are part of this church family now, which we are so blessed with. We know what they also experienced last year with the loss of a precious little loved one in Kenneth Scott, their little son. But uh, this year, right. uh, this, earlier this year. But they have some news to share, and I'm going to ask Gregory because Tamara didn't want to do it. But Ter- Gregory, I think, will since I asked him. Would you share your news with us, please? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Tamara and I are expecting. It's probably been noticeable, but we thought we would go public with it with our church family. Um, you, guys, you guys are dear to our hearts because you've been there for so many moments in my life. And then when I, I got married, for those of you that don't know, Pastor Bruce married us here in this chapel. And um, we were very fortunate to uh, conceive quite early, and our uh, Kenneth was his name that we lost in February. His due date was February 8th. This baby's due date is February 8th. So, so we're, we're nervous and excited and a little scared at the same time, and uh, we would like to share that with you guys, and thank you for the support, the unbelievable support that you guys did uh, for us. Um, truth be known, we wouldn't have been able to make it without your support that month when you guys supported us. Uh, she and I were both out of work for a month, and um, we, we live paycheck to paycheck like a lot of you do. So you guys really, I want you to know that that supported us during that hard time. So thank you, and uh, thank you for supporting us. We appreciate well, you're it. Both here. Thank you. Gregory and Tamara, on behalf of your church family, I want to offer prayer for you. Can we just bow our heads and have prayer together? Oh, thank you, Bruce. Gracious and loving Lord. God, they have such great love for you. And we're blessed to have them and their family as a part of the Imagine Church family. In fact, having them here makes the rest of us more faithful, nobler, better people because they are with us. God, we're excited about this news and we know that they're probably anxious and scared and excited, thrilled at the same time. But may they know as they walk through these weeks and months together, they are not alone, but that your people just will form a protective shield and circle around them that will lift them and carry them and pray for them daily. And I ask God that our people would remember to do that and pray for Gregory and Tamara as they pray for others on their prayer list. But I thank you, God, for the good news of what you are doing in their lives and for the fact that you are the God of endless chances. Mm. You are the God of grace, the God of love, the God of mercy, the God of forgiveness, the God of restoration. You are the God of new life. And for that, we give you thanks and praise this day. Be with Tamara especially in the days ahead. Be with Gregory. What a wonderful couple they are. Mm -hmm. And God, we are learning more about love and faithfulness just through watching them. And we thank you for what they mean to us. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you both for letting me.